What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay Mini to Rescue. Today we're going to be opening up this new warp crate that contains a pretty awesome roulette challenge. The first thing coming out of this box is the traditional warpfireminis.com business card and the awesome new sticker business card that I've already put on a mug. Next, we have the letter included in the box that explains the Warp Crate Roulette Challenge, which essentially is you sign up for the monthly box and you paint one of the miniatures in that box. Then you share it with them via their email or Facebook. And if you win, you get some new in the box Games Workshop product, which is pretty awesome. What I really like about the rules for this competition is that the winner isn't necessarily going to be the most technically you know skilled painter so they're running on cool points for this one and i really like that i mean honestly most competitions like this are pretty random but there's always that one entry that's just well that's a much better paint job than i could ever do and in this case you know if you think outside the box and you do something creative and unique with one of these used miniatures you still stand a chance up against even the best painters. So far, coming out of this box is a Goblin Spider Rider, a Stormcast unit, and now a Dark Eldar. And for right now, these are pretty interesting models. You know, so far there are five in total in this box. And I'm not super excited about any of these. There's a little more work than I'd like to do, especially on this model where the arm isn't fully attached properly and I don't really want to have to break out green stuff in order to fix it. Now, this Terminator got my attention. It's put together well, it's already primed and ready to go, so, you know, you'd think that this would be a perfectly good entry for this competition because it's already started. But, then I pulled this guy out and this is some kind of Warhammer 40,000 goblin orc whatever thing i have no idea what army this is from i'm just assuming it's orcs and it's just super cool and tiny so this is what i'm going to use for my entry all in all not a bad box at all all of these models are different and they offer something different in the way of painting so if you were just gonna get this box each month to kind of hone your skills and practice, this is the perfect way to do it. These are used miniatures, but they're not the worst miniatures in the world. They're not the worst you could find, especially if you dive deep on eBay. So head on over to warpfireminis.com and check out the boxes that they offer. I've been getting them since the beginning and I've been satisfied each month. So let's start working on this goblin and see where it takes us. The first thing I did was kind of pre-visualize my model. I wanted the goblin to be standing on, you know, kind of a hillside with this orc banner behind him. He's got his gun raised up like they just won or killed something or who knows, something celebratory. So I painted everything with black primer and we're going to start with a base coat of dark green. With Vallejo's Sick Green, we're going to do a top-down highlight on the skin to really start to emphasize those muscles. Adding a little bit of moon yellow into the pot is really going to brighten up that green, giving us that nice yellow green vibrancy. And we're going to do the same thing as the sick green and just kind of go over the top to again emphasize those muscles, but we're going to keep it a little bit tighter on some of the higher points like the head, the ears, his hands, that kind of thing, and a little bit down the back of the neck. Cleaning out the pot of the airbrush and starting fresh with some dwarf skin 
is gonna give us a little bit of variety on the skin tone overall. Now we're gonna use dark green, sick green, and moon yellow separately. We're gonna put a few dots on our palette, and we're gonna go back and forth and kind of glaze in and layer over the skin just to brighten up some of those highlight points or add a little bit more dark green into the shadows to give it a little bit more depth. Mephist in Red is gonna give a nice red beady eye to this goblin and then mix down into a glaze. I'm gonna go over the tip of the nose and the teeth and that's just gonna bring in a little bit of that red tone and give a little more blood into that face. Because we took the highlights to a pretty bright point with that yellow and then you know continued to add a little bit more while we were glazing we're gonna do an all-over shade of Ethonian camo shade and that's gonna bring a lot of these colors together and give a little more definition into the muscles Coming back in with dwarf skin, we're gonna lightly layer over anything that was skin toned already that got darkened down by that wash to just bring that color back out a little bit. Again, with dark green, we're gonna come back in and start to fill in a little bit more detail. Um, specifically, I'm gonna start to put some texture onto the skin, kind of give this old goblin some liver spots, and just kind of freshen up some of the shadows a little bit more, especially in the face where I really want those cheekbones and under the ears to be defined. But a lot of this is just to give texture. Citadel's Rhinox Hide is a base coat for all the leather across the entire model.
using Inky by Darkness, I'm going to base coat the pants that he's wearing. Now, this is more to match kind of the goblins that I have running around, the goblins and orcs that I personally own, which, to be honest, are mostly fantasy models. It's more of a personal preference, so you can pretty much pick whatever color you want. Vallejo Metal Color Dark Aluminum for all the weapons. Citadel's Abaddon Black for all the weapon handles, and eventually I'm going to highlight a little bit with some of that Stegadon Scale Green, just really light over kind of the highlight areas. It's almost not noticeable, but it changes that black to more of a dark blue just a little bit. With Stegadon Scale Green and adding a little bit of gray seer into it progressively, I'm going to highlight the pants. Going from Mornfang Brown to Scrag Brown to Kislev Flesh, I'm going to start to work up any of the leather parts around the model. So we're going to start with Mornfang Brown and kind of do an all over layer, bring in Scrag Brown a little bit tighter on the higher points, and then come in with Kislev Flesh to texture that leather. So we're just going to stipple and edge highlight any of the sharper, more prominent edges. Specifically with the Kislev Flesh, I'm trying to kind of keep it in specific areas just to bring that highlight up to a point. So especially on the bracers and the legs, I'm going down the side and down the front. So it's kind of like this faux non-metallic metal with leather just to kind of create that reflection. But it's not really a reflection. It's just kind of tattered in that specific area. And then on this kind of flap in the back, I'm just dragging everything down on one side, so on the left, and we're really creating a lot of texture and light coming from that direction. With Nuln Oil, I'm going to cover all of the metallics. Using a little bit of Vallejo's Rust Wash, I'm going to go over those metallics in some of the deeper recesses just to kind of give it that nice grimy aged and rusty look. Coming in with metal color aluminum, I'm going to edge highlight the end of the club that he's holding, 
just because it has some really nice sharp angles on it and it's going to stand out nicely with those edge highlights. I will also be edge highlighting the gun and layering over any of the larger parts that don't have as much rust on them. That pretty much finishes up the miniature. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed this Warp Crate Roulette Challenge. Like I said earlier, it's kinda nice to just get a box of random minis that you can use to kinda hone your painting. You can practice on a lot of different, you know, types of models and surfaces and textures. And you're really gonna get a lot out of this box. And having that competition you know, is just a really cool bonus. So head on over to warpfireminis.com and check it out. Thank you again for joining me on another eBay miniature rescue. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing check out my Instagram page at eBay Miniature Rescues. I am starting to try and post a lot more normal stuff on there instead of just finished miniatures. So you can kind of get a glimpse into what's going on before videos come out, as well as the Facebook page at eBay Miniature Rescues as well. Once again, I've been Casey, and I will see you in the next video.